if you will please help me in welcoming Narinder. Thank you. It is a, ple a pleasure to be here. And as I'm waiting for the slide, because there we go, I'm waiting. And so today I'm going to talk about how we can do good better. When you think about the leaders that exist within our borders and beyond our borders, they are motivated to drive impact and create a better society. They have committed to doing good better. But driving impact is not easy. And knowing if you're driving impact can be more difficult. When we think about voluntourism, here is a great example of something that feels good. On the surface, voluntourism makes a lot of sense. You could travel abroad, you could help people, you could integrate into a new culture, and you can feel good. This is a billion dollar industry, and you have millions of people from wealthy countries going to poor countries each year with the hope of doing good. Now, let's break down what that good is. They are painting walls. They are volunteering for orphanages. They are building schools or potentially digging wells. Is that truly driving impact? These volunteers are inexperienced often short term, from a few days to a few weeks. They could put strain on, on local resources and often disrupt local economies. And I think most importantly, they can create harm. Studies have shown that volunteers that go into orphanages have created a situation of increased trauma and, and, and challenges of child development for the kids in orphanages. So with that, why do we engage in voluntourism? Voluntourism makes us feel good. Voluntourism and the structures around it, the charities that support it, and the companies that unlock it, are doing that to serve us. They are doing that uh, and doing that in a way that reinforces stereotypes that are detrimental and ultimately are not driving impact. As you think about what you're going to do in your future and whether or not you raise that $5,000 to go on that one week trip to Ecuador to build that house, think about how else you can deploy your capital. How far would that $5,000 go if you invested that in a local school? Unlocked the ability of a teacher to teach for six months? Or invested in a local entrepreneur? While voluntourism makes us feel good, it doesn't necessarily drive the impact we aim to create. And what we know from research and from data is that short-term volunteers can hurt and harm more than help. Let's take a look at another example. So play pumps, really interesting innovation that came out many, many years ago. Um, and it was an idea that you can use and harness the power of play to pump water. And they thought, the founders thought, and um, folks that came around this idea felt that through this, they could solve for some of the big water challenges that existed across Africa. So the founder quit his job, committed his life to build play pumps, raised tens of millions of dollars, and began on this journey. <coughs> but what was not considered was the practicality of the solution. When you're in the playground, <coughs> and you're on a merry-go-round, it starts, to, it starts to, to, to move freely after it gains momentum, right? And that is where the fun happens. Now, in the case of play pumps, it's a little different. You need constant force 
And so you need the kids to be constantly playing in that merry-go-round to actually achieve the goal, which is to pump the water. This took the fun right out of it, and kids stopped using it. And today, play pumps sit idle or have been removed across the communities they were built in. And what we need to know um, is when we're designing, we need to design with community and not for community. Play pump was an example where we attempted to design for and solve without partnership. Now, how many folks here are versed with the buy one, give one model? Yeah, sounds pretty good. You know, you buy a pair of canvas shoes and another pair of canvas shoes goes to somebody in need around the world, right? So what, what problem are they solving for? Shoelessness? Is, is, that, is that the problem? It seems to be the problem they're solving for. After living and traveling around the world, uh, I, can, I and other experts can say that shoelessness is not an issue. It has never been and will likely never be. But what they do do in this model um, is that they flood the market. So they do this thing called dumping by sending free shoes into local communities. So let's, let's go through the life cycle and understand what that means. So if you are a shoemaker in a local community, and you may employ three or four people within, within your business, and there comes along this well-intended organization dumps thousands of shoes within your community, what happens? You will likely not survive, your business will likely not survive, and you will likely not be able to continue to employ people within your business. And so ultimately what happens is this hurts local economies. And so with the initial vision of feeling good and thinking you're driving impact, when you, deep, when you go deep into the life cycle of what this means, you realize that there is more harm than good in a buy one, give one model. Communities lose businesses and lose autonomy. When we're thinking about doing good, we need to ensure that we're thinking about doing good with the right solutions. We know that driving impact goes beyond good intentions. Now, when we think about the world, resources are declining, Technology is disrupting the way we live and we work. And actually, our, our big social challenges are scaling faster than our solutions. And there's a whole slew of new problems that are arising. Uh, and so we need to find a way to collectively do good better. Let's go deep on Canada. So in many ways, Canada is more prosperous than ever, right? Um, over the last two decades, we've seen tremendous growth. We are more educated. We live in safer communities. We have higher wages and fewer of, our, fewer of us live in poverty today. However, this progress masks some deep inequities. So there are challenges that continue to persist across, across our nation. So for example, if you do a deep dive into education, while our overall educational rates are, are growing, when you look in indigenous communities, those rates have not changed and they trail the Canadian average. Wage growth is not benefiting all of us and multiple health outcomes are worsening. I believe that we have an opportunity to reframe the way we think about doing good and act in a way that we do good better. And there are a number of tools and resources that can help us get there. There's new technologies, there's new resources, and there's new models. So, have folks here heard of Crisis Text Line? Phenomenal organization, and what they've done 
is they've harnessed the power of AI and created a hotline of immediate access to kids and youth, and actually adults, who are facing crisis. They're able to triage and focus on what is most and who is in most need. There are new resources coming into the sector to try to solve for some of the big social issues that we're facing. The work I do is to run Leaf Pico Center for Social Impact. We are a venture philanthropy firm and we harness the power of the private sector to invest that capacity and that inst institutional knowledge into the social sector to scale what works. There's also new models coming into play. So when you think about the past, we used to think about doing good on kind of one bucket of our lives and making money in this different bucket of our lives. But that is merging. More people want to merge meaning and money and find ways of doing both. Think impact investing. The investment of funds into companies and organizations that have, a, have not only a focus on driving social or environmental goals, but also financial returns. And you see progress even happening within spaces like impact investing. Uh, the the co-founder of Malala Fund has now created Now Ventures, and their goal is to invest in people who are diverse and women to unlock the potential of solutions that work for more of us. In all of this, what is important, I believe, is our mindset. When we think of good and bad, we think of that in binary terms. We are a good person or we are a bad person. And that in itself has limitations. That, allow, that does not allow us to grow. That does not allow us to receive feedback and become better. There is a psychology um, a professor at, the universe, uh, at New York University who talks about how we can become better. And she says that our attachment to believing in being a good person is getting in the way of becoming a better person. And that we need to consider our lives as a journey, as a journey of being a good-ish person that allows us to then absorb and learn and continuously grow and drive greater impact and ultimately become a better person. And this is one of the things that I've had embedded in my life as I've gone through my journey, starting from electrical engineering to um, my MBA and then working in investment banking before spending the last decade or so working across West Africa and Canada in microfinance, impact investing, and venture philanthropy. The view that I'm on this journey of growth, of understanding how to drive impact, on understanding how to do that better, has driven me throughout my career. I had an early mentor who suggested that I find a slogan that represented who I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. And so I, I thought about it and I realized as, as a child of immigrants, what drove me was access to opportunity. And that became my slogan. So throughout the last decade, in every decision I've made, both personal and professional, access to opportunity and increasing that for others has driven me. And as you grow and grow into your careers, I encourage you to reflect on your journey of doing good and explore how you can do good better. Thank you.